Hi, this is Pete Lyons bringing you a Let's Play Salesforce video, and today we are going to use Visual Workflow to generate a 99-digit random number. Uh, this is largely inspired by Andrew's post at sfdcinthec.com, which uh, will be linked in the description below. Uh, he was able to, to do some uh, random number generation using quasi-random elements in the system. It's actually a really good post, uh, and it's really the best attempt to date to uh, solve this problem. I mean, I have RAND and RAND between in Excel, and I have crypto random number and a number of other things in Apex that I can use, but I don't have anything declaratively to get random numbers. So I need somewhere to store it. Uh, so for the purpose of demonstration, I'm just going to store it in the description field on the account. Um, I can't store it in a number field because it's greater than 18 characters. Um, so I'm just going to create an account. I'm going to grab the ID of that account too. So then I'm going to go and create a flow. Now, I need a variable so that we know which account we're talking about. And normally this is going to get passed in from a process builder. You can also pass it in with uh, at invocable method via Apex, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, but today we're just going to hard code it. So we don't have I++. So if we're going to do something 99 times, first we have to count to the number 99. I'm going to actually do this by multiplying. First, I'm going to count to 9. And I need to have a collection variable. It can be any data type. Uh, I choose number because we're counting. I'm going to call it loop 1. And then I'm going to add 9 rows of assignment. So now I've got nine rows where I can add to my loop one collection variable. And for each one, I'm going to put a one in it. Uh, this can be anything, doesn't really matter. So the result of this is we will have a collection of integers with nine entries. Now I want to loop through that collection. I need to have a variable to loop through. It must be of the same data type as my collection. Then I need another assignment element. This time I'm going to count to 11. Now by looping through the 9 and then counting to 11 for each, that means that my second loop variable is going to have 99 entries. It needs to be of the same data type as the previous. And then we're going to add 11 of these.
Now for each of my nine, I'm going to count to 11. At the end of that, loop two is going to have 99 entries. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to loop through those. Next, I need to give the system something to do to get a little bit of time to pass. Because we're going to get our random number by just asking what time it is. So I'm just going to go to a random account. Just do a query. It doesn't matter what it returns. Uh, I need to have some entry criteria. So we're just going to say that account number does not equal x. We need to save it to a variable. We're not going to do anything with it, but we have to put it somewhere. We're actually going to be overwriting this every time we pass through the loop. We must grab at least one field, so we grab the ID. Hit OK. Now we need a formula that's going to return a different random integer at different times. So we know that going and querying the system is going to take a little bit of time. So we're just going to keep figuring out what time it is. This needs to be a text variable because ultimately we're going to be saving it into a text field. So let's start with a simple formula. What is this going to return? Now minus today is going to give me the number of days it's been since midnight. So if I do this at exactly noon, it's going to return a 0.5. That's a good start. So now this formula as it is, is actually going to error out because they're of incompatible data types. Now is a date time and today is a date. So we need to convert uh, the today function into a date time. We do that with the date time value function. So this will now actually return an integer that represents the number of days it's been since midnight. But we want that as milliseconds. So we're going to take that output and we're going to multiply it by 86400, uh, 86, zero, zero, which is the number of seconds in a day, 000. zero, zero. Now, <clears throat> we're going to convert it to text. And we only want the rightmost character of it because we only want one random integer at a time. So we use the write function and the number one to say the rightmost character of the integer that is the number of milliseconds that have passed since midnight. Then we need an assignment element. And we need to create another random variable, or another uh, text variable. We're going to call this one random string. And for each time we pass through the loop, we want to add the return of rand now. Then we connect our elements. Now, why 99? Well, we're using queries to uh, cause the system to take a little time so that our return of rand now is going to be different. Even if it only takes 20, 30 milliseconds, um, that's still going to give us a sufficiently different number every time. Uh, that will get a nice random number. So then we're going to use the record update 
which is going to consume our 100th SQL query. And we're going to update the account that we passed in at the beginning. Now we just hard coded it. Again, you're probably going to want to pass this in through Process Builder. You can also do it through uh, Lightning App Pages. So where the ID equals the account that we're going to act on. We want to update the description field to contain our new random string. And that's what we're going to do when we end the loop. So now if we have any errors, we'll find them when we hit save. And looks like we have a syntax error with our formula. Ah, we forgot to convert this to text. So that should be correct. And it's not. And the flow needs to start item. So syntax errors resolved. Let's give it a whirl. Take a look at our account. See that the description field is blank. Go ahead and run. Our flow is finished. We reload our account. And there's a nice big random number for us. So. Uh, if you like this video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff that everybody always says. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.